Hello, I am Tu Kim Lam. Welcome to the Medical News Show from Washington, D.C. In the last edition of the Medical News, we, would, we talk about the function of the gastric and its disease. Today, we're going to talk about the role of the Helicobacter pylori bacteria and how is it linking to the gastric disease. Here with us today is Dr. Sang Tran, who is currently practicing internal medicine in Falls Church, Virginia. Dr. Tran will talk with us about the H. pylori bacteria and the danger that this bacteria could bring to the patient of gastric disease. Welcome to the Medical News Show, Dr. Tran. Uh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our shows, and uh, hello, Mrs. Lam. Uh, Dr. Tran, let's talk about the H. pylori bacteria that we mentioned uh, last um, edition. First of all, can you tell our audience uh, when and where the bacteria were discovered? This is one of these uh, amazing uh, discoveries in, in medicine. In uh, 1982, the, uh, in Australia, two doctors and uh, names in Barry Marshall and Robin Warden. And when they work on the uh, looking from the specimen is obtained from the stomach of one of the patients uh, suffering from the uh, stomach disease, they found the presence of the bacteria. And very difficult for them to really uh, correlate the bacteria to the gastric disease. But sooner or later, and they able to prove that the bacteria are really causing the stomach problem. And Dr. Um, Marshall, she's the one who really swallowed some of the bacteria uh, culture from the cultures in the lab. And later he developed uh, stomach symptoms. And we, when they really uh, looking in his stomach and they found the presence of bacteria, this proved that the bacteria can cause the stomach related disease like gastritis or ulcer. Uh, and from that on, they treat him with antibiotic and he able to really recovering from the uh, diseases. From that discovery, uh, the two doctors really received the uh, Nobel Prize in medicine in uh, 2005. And really, so now the concept about the disease changing because people now focus more the bacteria than the old uh, theories about stomach disease like stress-related, food-related, or the acid-related um, that causing the stomach problem. So right now, most people in the world right now, most experts uh, believe in the bacteria causing the stomach problem. So what kind of environment does this bacteria live in and how does this transmit from one person to another person, sir? The bacteria is, uh, really is, uh, can be found uh, everywhere in the world. But about 50% uh, they get infections in developing countries and almost 80% really no symptom for, for a certain time. Uh, until uh, they develop really symptoms related to stomach problem. The bacteria can be found in saliva, feces, including some of the dental plaques uh, that causing uh, caries. The uh, most experts found that the bacteria can be transmitted by uh, waters, from oral to oral, by contact, from feces to oral, and especially in vegetables. Especially the when we try to preserve the vegetables uh, that may be causing more problem because we create some uh, environment that the bacteria can survive longer, uh, like bickles or, or something that we use to, to keep the, the food longer. So that's all the things that we know about the bacteria, how they transmit it. They can go from water to food and from person to person. Uh, that way. So it becomes so dangerous because they can transmit everywhere. According to the studies that 80% of the time that the patient got infected with the bacteria did not even know that they have the bacteria in their body. So how do, uh, or how do, we, might, uh, how do we know that we might be infected with this uh, virus, sir? And what other symptoms, sir? 
before we're talking about the symptoms of the, uh, the stomach-related uh, diseases, uh, I think it's bacteria is very important because uh, they secrete the chemicals called ureas. Ureas is break down the urea to uh, carbon dioxide and ammonia. Uh, therefore, it's just looking for this bacteria, we're looking for the urea to identify them by these chemicals they produce. The urea causing uh, damage to the uh, gastric cells. And the gastric cells, when, when they become damaged by the injury, they secret more and trigger more releasing of the gastrin. And the gastrin, they indirectly stimulate the stomach to make more acid. And the high percentage of acid in the stomach may be the main cause of the gastric disease and ulcer. So I think it's very important because it's the, the bacteria you know, create a lot of problems in, inside the stomach. The symptom why is very difficult because they may create all kinds of symptoms like you know indigestions and stomach upset after they eat or really real uh, bacterial disease uh, symptom that we talked uh, last time. I mean people have pain after they eat or they have abdominal pain when they have empty stomach. So this symptom is very complex and we cannot really identify just by the symptom. We have to look for the bacteria by using some special methods to get inside to identify the bacteria. Speaking of the symptoms, so because, because of the nature of it's complex of diagnosing the symptoms. So nowadays, how, what kind of method that the, the doctor use uh, to uh, detect this bacteria in a patient? We have many methods to identify the virus in, in the past until now. We use blood tests, we use stool tests, and uh, we use uh, uh, breath tests, and we use uh, urine tests as well. But the most important is, is endoscopy. I Means the doctor will take a look at the inside of the stomach and try to get the specimen in the stomach to identify the presence of bacteria or using the urea test. Urea test means we, we, when we identify the urea in the specimen, it very likely relates to the bacteria because the bacteria secrete the urea. Now, the breath test is another test, usually to follow the results of the treatment. After we treat the patient for, for a number of days, like 12 or 14 days, uh, people will, will be called back to get the breath test because during the breath test, we can identify the present or the, the, the treatment were effective or not by using that test. So right now, the most common is endoscopy and urea breath test. At the last edition, we talk about the stomach or kind of disease of the stomach and the stomach cancer. And today, we talk about the H. pylori bacteria. Can you tell our audience the relationship between the H. pylori bacteria and um, this um, stomach cancer in particular and um, stomach disease in uh, general? Well, really up to now, this is uh, good evidence that the, this bacteria can cause in cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know exactly just how this happened, but it's very strong evidence that the cancer of the stomach relate very strongly to the presence of bacteria. This bacteria can cause all kinds of symptoms in the stomach like gastritis and uh, ulcers and including cancers. So this is why is this bacteria is so important and to looking for and able to treat them. Yeah. So once a patient has been found infected with H. pylori bacteria, um, then how will he or, be, he or she will be treated? What are the level of success in the treatment, sir? The treatment right now, currently we use a two antibiotics and combined with another medication we call proton uh, pump inhibitor called PPI, like Prilosec, Nexium, and Prevacid. When we combine the two medication, the two antibiotic plus one of the PPI, we call triple therapy that the therapy we currently use in the world right now. But the successful rate is quite not really 100%. Usually we attain about uh, 79 or 80% in the United States and other countries as well. So right now the problem is because we recognize this bacteria is strong 
and it can become resistant with the other medication, including antibiotics as well. So, in the most recent research, have shown that this bacteria is resistant to medication, uh, especially the antibiotics. So, how does this affect affect the treatment of the disease? So. The treatment is now had to be changing because it's usually after the first treatment, we follow the patient by using the uh, urea prep test uh, to see how effective the, the treatment. Then we have to reconsider, retreat the patient with different uh, formulation. And right now, with the current knowledge right now, we use because we know more the bacteria become resistant with the amoxicillin, very commonly used in the world right now in developing country because they can you know, buy the antibiotic easily over the pharmacy. And right now the combination is sometimes we use four medication. Now the old medication will be replaced by the new one that you can see on the screen is Lefox, uh, Levofloxacin. And sometimes we use the uh, anti-tuberculosis medication, Rifapirtin, to combine in order to achieve the more success rate on the treatment of uh, this bacteria. Now, the newest one is the way we design to treat this bacteria, we call sequential, sequential treatment. I mean, five days we use two different antibiotics, followed by another five days we use two different antibiotics, I mean we use four antibiotics to deal with just one bacteria. And hopefully with that kind of treatment, we're able to achieve a little bit better outcome in terms of the treatment of this bacteria. So before closing the show, um, would you please let our audience know how we can prevent the infection of this bacteria, uh, Helicobacter pylori? In order to prevent the, uh, the disease, I think is food uh, hygiene is very important. And avoid eating any homemade, uh, poorly preserved food like pickle or uh, salty uh, waters and put some vegetables in there. I think because uh, if we do at home, sometimes we cannot really, you know, able to get rid of all the bacteria and the food. So avoid these food, wash carefully all the vegetables and really try to get some early evaluation if you develop some kind of symptom of abdominal pain without any good reason. And then the, hopefully in the future, in the future, uh, most experts now are working on the vaccine. So hopefully, you know, in the next four or five years, hopefully we hear more about the vaccine against this bacteria. That's the best way to help people in the world preventing from the disease and uh, related uh, from the this bacteria and also decrease the incidence of the cancer in the future. Thank you very much, Dr. Tran, for joining us today. And thank you for uh, watching uh, our medical news. And again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Slam. Thank you, sir. That was Dr. Sang Tran who shared with us some um, insight on the Helicobacter pylori bacteria and it's danger to people who contract gastric cancer and other gastric disease. We hope that the information provided by Dr. Tran has shed more light on this disease. That is all the time we have for this edition of Medical News. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Kim Lam. We'll see you next time on the Medical News. Until then, have a great one.